Samantha Ray's breath came in ragged gasps as she tore through the moonlit forest, thorny branches clawing at her emerald cloak. The coppery scent of blood, her blood, mingled with the loamy earth and cloying incense that clung to her skin. Betrayal still seared in her veins, as caustic as the dark magic she'd barely escaped. Behind her, the baying of hounds pierced the night, echoing off the twisted oaks. Her coven. Her sisters in magic, now hunting her like a common criminal. All for a crime she didn't commit. A crime she would never commit, no matter what the elder priestess claimed. Murder. The very word made bile rise in her throat. She was a healer, trained in the ancient arts of green magic and the delicate balance of nature. To kill, to take a life, went against everything she believed in. Everything she was. But the elders didn't care about truth. Only power. And with Samantha out of the way, her sister Rowena would be next in line for High Priestess. Sweet, ambitious Rowena, with her silken smile and eyes like chips of obsidian. The hound's howls grew louder, laced with the thrumming pulse of forbidden blood magic. They were getting closer. Gritting her teeth, Samantha summoned the dregs of her power and cast a desperate cloaking spell. Mist curled around her shaking limbs as she stumbled into a moonlit glade. At its center stood a crumbling stone altar, veiled in a latticework of glowing sigils, wards placed by a magic far older than her own. Samantha froze. This was Blackthorn Land, territory of the warlock coven that had been her own sister's sworn enemy for generations. To trespass here meant certain death. But what choice did she have? The part of the forest belonging to her coven was the first place they would look. At least here, she might be able to catch her breath, form some kind of plan. Well, well. What have we here? The deep honey drawl sliced through the night, sending shivers down Samantha's spine. She spun toward the voice, hands raised to cast, but exhaustion made her mind sluggish. Her foot caught on a root and she stumbled. Strong arms closed around her waist, breaking her fall. Samantha found herself pulled against a broad chest, caged by steely muscles. Pulse thundering, she tilted her head back to meet eyes the eerie silver of a winter moon. Sensual lips curled in a half-smirk beneath an aquiline nose and blade-sharp cheekbones. Raven hair fell in tousled waves to his shoulders. Easy there, witchling, he murmured, hot breath caressing her temple. Wouldn't want you to hurt yourself. Well, more than you already have. His quick silver gaze flicked pointedly to the bloom of scarlet staining her side. Samantha shoved away from him, staggering back on trembling legs. Raw power crackled in the air between them, raising the fine hairs on her nape. A warlock. And not just any warlock. She'd know that cruel beautiful face anywhere. Nathaniel Blackthorn, she breathed, heart rabbiting behind her ribs. Sweet goddess. She'd just fallen into the arms of the most notorious mage in three realms. The sinfully handsome and deadly Blackthorn heir, rumored to command shadows and drink the blood of his enemies. And yet, a traitorous part of her whispered, he'd caught her, steadied her, when he could have just let her fall. The one and only, Nathaniel purred, stalking toward her with the fluid grace of a predator. Now, what's a pretty little greenbriar witch doing bleeding all over my forest? Don't know it's death to trespass here? Samantha retreated until her shoulders hit the rough bark of the oak tree behind her. Exhaustion dragged at her limbs, made her magic sputter like a guttering candle. Darkness crept into the edges of her vision. Please, she rasped, hating the broken quaver in her voice. Hating that this arrogant, dangerous male was seeing her so weak. I didn't... I didn't know where else to go. My coven, they think I... A shudder rippled through her. They think I killed Priestess Vivienne. Something flickered in those moonlight eyes. Something almost like sympathy? But it was gone before she could be sure, shuddered behind a mask of cruel amusement. Did you? He cocked a dark brow, prowling closer still. The heat of him seared her front, made her treacherous blood sing. This close, she could smell him, cedar and smoke and wild, masculine power. It was dizzying. 
Terrifying. Exhilarating. No? The denial came out sharper than she'd intended, laced with all of the pain and fury churning inside her. Of course not. Vivian. She was like a mother to me. I loved her. But even as the words left her lips, an insidious whisper coiled through her mind. Hadn't she wished in her darkest moments that the ancient priestess would just disappear? So Samantha could finally step out of her shadow, claim her rightful place in the coven hierarchy. So the Greenbrier witches would see her for her true strength, not just Vivian's dutiful ward. No. She clenched her jaw, banishing the thought. She would never act on such selfish desires, never betray her oath as a healer. And yet, the seed of doubt had been planted. By the knowing glint in Nathaniel's eyes, he'd seen it flicker across her face. Ah, so that's how it is. Another step, caging her fully against the tree with the hard planes of his body. One hand lifted, leather-clad fingers grazing the delicate skin of her throat. Witches always so quick to turn on their own. Even green healers like you, little dove. The endearment was mocking, edged in contempt. But it still sent a surge of traitorous heat unfurling through Samantha's core. Goddess, what was wrong with her? She should be fighting. Twisting away, spitting in his too handsome face, calling down the wrath of all the earth and trees. Not, not leaning into his touch, skin tingling, breath coming faster. I am nothing like them, she gritted out. Anger at his accusation gave her a much-needed burst of strength. She jerked her chin up, meeting that molten silver gaze head-on. I would never kill an innocent. It goes against everything I believe in. Hmm, bye. And what do you believe in, I wonder? His voice lowered, gravel rough, fingers sliding up to tangle in the wild copper of her hair. Duty? Virtue? Denying your true nature, day after day, shackling yourself to an outdated code while your sisters scheme in the shadows? Samantha swallowed hard. His words had slipped beneath her skin, licking at her most protected places. The darkest corners of her heart, where resentment and forbidden longing lay coiled, waiting to strike. She shoved at his chest, a desperate bid for space. But he was immovable. Hard and hot, the thrum of his magic like a living current against her skin. What would you know of virtue? Her lips curled in a snarl, even as she trembled like a leaf in his hold. You're Nathaniel Blackthorn, scourge of the covens, master of blood and bone. They say you've bedded and bled, witches from every coven in the realm. Wicked amusement danced in his eyes. Not every coven. The hand in her hair tightened, forcing her head back as he lowered his mouth to the leaping pulse at the base of her throat. Samantha shuddered at the barest graze of teeth. It seems I've neglected the Greenbriars. A terrible oversight on my part. He traced the dark whorl of her coven tattoo with his tongue. Samantha's toes curled in her boots, a ragged gasp escaping her lips. Desire and dread knotted her stomach. If he bites me, if he marks me, I didn't know me. But the sharp sting of teeth never came. Only the velvet slide of his wicked mouth up the column of her throat to the sensitive spot behind her ear. Do you know what else they say about me, witchling? His whisper was a dark caress, igniting nerves Samantha didn't know she possessed. That I have a terrible weakness for damsels in distress. Especially the powerful, prickly kind. He nipped at her earlobe and Samantha jolted, a mortifying mule catching in her throat. So here's my proposition. He drew back just far enough to meet her dazed gaze, his own eyes glittering like starlight on obsidian. Sanctuary, for as long as you need it. My coven's protection, while you lick your wounds and figure out your next move. In return? His hand clenched in her hair, possessive, promising. His other arm snaked around her waist, hauling her flush against him. The thick ridge of his arousal branded her belly and Samantha's heart stuttered. In return, I get to uncover all your dirty little secrets. All the dark desires, the forbidden urges, you keep so carefully leashed. 
The pads of his fingers dug into the lush curve of her hip, a delicious sting. Stop fighting your nature, Samantha. The sound of her name on his lips shook her to the core. Embrace it. Embrace me. A wolfish smile. I promise to make it worth your while. Samantha's head spun. This was madness. Absolute madness. She should shove him away, summon every ounce of magic in her weary body, and run. Run hard and fast, as far away from this seductive demon as possible. But what then? Where would she go? The rest of her coven wanted her dead. The mundane authorities would never understand, even if she could reach them before Rowena's assassins found her. The hard truth crashed over her like a frigid wave. She had nowhere else to turn, no one else to keep her safe while she unraveled this tangled web of lies and cleared her name. No other allies strong enough to defy the Greenbriars, except the coven that had defied them for centuries. Blackthorn and their dark prince, whose arms suddenly felt more like a fortification than a prison. Who, despite all the terrifying rumors, was offering her the one thing she needed most. A chance. Slowly, hardly believing her own daring, Samantha relaxed into his embrace. Let her exhausted body melt against the hard strength of him, all hot skin and eldritch power tipped her head back and parted her lips in a silent invitation. Nathaniel's eyes flashed, triumphant and ravenous. That's my good girl, he growled. Then his mouth claimed hers in a kiss that shattered her world to ashes, only to remake it in shades of shadow and sin and searing bliss. Samantha knew as she poured herself into that devouring kiss that there would be no turning back. she just made a deal with the devil himself. And goddess help her, she'd never been so terrified, or felt so alive. In the days that followed, Samantha found herself ensconced in the heart of enemy territory, a reluctant guest in the sprawling Blackthorn estate. The ancient manor house was all gothic spires and shadow-draped halls, a far cry from the airy, sunlit temple of her own coven. But even more unsettling than the unfamiliar surroundings was the constant, prickling awareness of Nathaniel's presence. He was everywhere, in the heated glances across the dining table, the accidental brush of fingers as they poured over dusty tomes in the library, the whisper of his power against her skin like an invisible caress. It was maddening, thrilling, a dangerous dance on the knife's edge of temptation, and Samantha didn't know how much longer she could keep her footing especially when, with each passing day, the Dark Prince proved himself to be so much more than the ruthless seducer of legend. Oh, he was still arrogant, domineering, utterly shameless in his pursuit of her, wearing down her defenses with devastating charm and scorching innuendo. But he was also fiercely intelligent, with a cutting wit and a mind like a steel trap. He challenged her at every turn, forcing her to question her long-held assumptions about magic, about the coven hierarchies, about herself. The world isn't split into good witches and bad warlocks, you know, he told her one rain last night as they sat before a roaring fire in his private study. Outside, the storm howled like a living thing, lashing the diamond-paned windows. There's light and darkness in all of us. What matters is how you wield it. What you fight for. He'd held her gaze over the rim of his whiskey tumbler, silver eyes, molten. Blind obedience to an archaic moral code isn't strength, Samantha. It's fear. The truly powerful don't let others define them. They forge their own path, by any means necessary. Samantha had looked away first, pulse racing. Because deep down in the secret places she hardly dared acknowledge, part of her thrilled to his words. Yearned to cast off the chains of duty and tradition, to embrace the wildness thrumming in her blood. To be, for once in her life, entirely selfish. It wasn't just Nathaniel's magnetic pull that kept her off balance. Living among the Blackthorns, seeing their coven dynamics firsthand, was a revelation. Where the Greenbriars were all rigid hierarchies and stifling conformity, the Blackthorns were a riotous tangle of strong personalities, as apt to be at each other's throats as watching each other's backs. 
But beneath the swaggering bravado and vicious barbs was an unshakable loyalty, a fierce protective instinct for their own. Slowly, tentatively, Samantha found herself being drawn into their midst. Nathaniel's younger sister Ophelia, a spirited beauty with amethyst eyes and a shock of platinum hair, took a particular shine to her. She dragged Samantha on midnight flights through the forest, cackling as they dodged branches on their enchanted brooms, and snuck into her room for late-night gossip sessions over contraband fairy wine. For the first time in her life, Samantha knew what it was to have a true friend. A sister of the heart, not just of magic. But even as her soul unfurled like a flower in the Blackthorn's wild garden, the specter of her past loomed larger every day. Grim news trickled in from the borders, sightings of Greenbrier warriors, ominous stirrings in the currents of magic, whispers of dark rituals and forbidden summonings. Rowena was on the move. And she wouldn't stop until Samantha was in chains, or dead. She's always been jealous of you? Nathaniel said grimly, after a particularly harrowing report from his spies. They were in the manor's cavernous training hall, circling each other with practice blades in hand. With each clash of steel on steel, Samantha felt more of her old hesitancy slough away, replaced by a newfound boldness. Your power, your potential. She knows that you're the rightful heir to Vivian's mantle, no matter what lies she spun. Samantha narrowed her eyes, fainting left before slashing right. Nathaniel parried easily, a fierce grin curving his lips. Goddess, he was magnificent like this. All coiled strength and lethal grace, dark hair plastered to his brow with sweat. Rowena doesn't want to lead the coven, she bit out, frustration sharpening her strikes. Slash, thrust, whirl away. She wants to destroy it. Molded into something twisted, something wrong. I've seen it in her eyes. Then we stop her. The words were a low, savage vow. Nathaniel pressed forward, caging her against the wall with his body and blade. His skin seared her through the thin barrier of their clothes, his breath hot on her cheek. We end this once and for all, Samantha. Together. And oh, she wanted that. Wanted him, with a violence that stole her breath. But, uh, um, you know I can't stay. The words felt like shattered glass in her throat. She forced herself to meet his burning gaze. After the truth comes out, after I clear my name, I have to go back. Take my rightful place. Try to heal the wounds Rowena's treachery has caused. For a long, taut moment, Nathaniel simply stared at her. Samantha's heart battered itself against her ribs, the air between them thick with words unspoken. Then, slowly, he lowered his blade, lifted a hand to cradle her cheek, calloused thumb sweeping over her cheekbone. I know, he said softly, resignedly. It's what you were born for. That insufferable sense of honor, of duty. It's part of what drew me to you in the first place. A wry twist of his lips. Well, that and the way you fill out a set of leathers. Samantha huffed a surprised laugh, even as her heart twisted with sorrow. With regret for all that could never be. Nathaniel. Shh. <sighs> his forehead lowered to rest against hers. An achingly tender gesture. You don't have to say it. I've always known you were a wild thing, unable to be tamed or kept. That this, he swallowed, Adam's apple bobbing. That we were on borrowed time. Tears stung Samantha's eyes. She wrapped her fingers around his wrist, clinging to this moment, this impossible man. Maybe in another life, she whispered. If things were different. If I was different. You're exactly as you should be. The words were fierce, almost angry. He pulled back to scorch her with the intensity of his gaze. Never apologize for your strength, Samantha. For your convictions. They're what make you, you. Then he was kissing her, pouring all the pent-up longing and bittersweet understanding into the slide of his lips over hers. Samantha met him with equal ferocity, arms locking around his neck as she drowned in sensation. In him. Tomorrow, she would have to be strong. Focused. A leader prepared to take back her coven and right her sister's wrongs. 
But tonight, tonight she would take this stolen slice of passion, of connection. Tonight, she would let herself live. Their clothes fell away between desperate, reverent touches. The chill stone of the training room wall against Samantha's bare back made her gasp, the contrast with Nathaniel's scorching skin dizzying. He laughed against her throat, voice gone rough with want. Cold witchling. His tongue laved the fragile skin over her pulse. Let me warm you up. And he did. With hands and lips and clever fingers, he set her aflame, igniting nerve endings she hadn't known existed. He played her body like a master bard, coaxing out a symphony of sighs and moans until she was writhing against him, nails scoring his back, begging for more. When at last he entered her, hard and hot and perfect, Samantha nearly wept from the sweet relief of it. This, this was what she had craved without knowing. The glorious melding of flesh and spirit, the sense of being known to her very marrow, of being cherished, even as she was challenged, devoured. They moved together in a primal rhythm as old as magic itself, sharing breath and sweat and tiny, broken sounds of pleasure. The storm inside, Samantha built to a fever pitch, a wild maelstrom of sensation that had her head tipping back and her toes curling against Nathaniel's straining flanks. Then his clever fingers found the secret jewel at the apex of her thighs, and the world shattered. Samantha flew apart with a ragged cry, starbursts of color exploding behind her eyelids. Nathaniel followed her over the edge moments later, her name a sacred invocation on his lips, as he spilled his heat inside her. They clung to each other as the aftershocks rolled through them, a tangle of trembling limbs and thundering hearts. In that moment, as she floated back to earth in her lover's arms, Samantha could almost believe that this was all that mattered. That the outside world, with its intrigues and power struggles and uncertain future, was a distant dream. But all too soon, reality came crashing back in. A pounding at the training room door, urgent voices raised in alarm. Samantha and Nathaniel sprang apart hastily tugging on clothes with fingers still clumsy from release. It was Ophelia, face bone white beneath her vibrant hair. They're here, she gasped out, amethyst eyes huge with fear. The green briars. They've breached the perimeter wards. Rowena, she's with them. Ice flooded Samantha's veins. This was it. The moment of reckoning. Come at last. She reached for Nathaniel's hand, lacing their fingers together. Found strength in the solid grip of his palm, the resolute fire in his silver eyes as they met hers. No more running. No more hiding. It was time to face her demons, and pray to the goddess she emerged unscathed. The final battle had begun. The Great Hall of Blackthorn Manor was a scene out of a nightmare. Shattered glass and splintered wood littered the floor, evidence of the violent magical battle that had raged mere moments before. Tapestries smoldered on the walls, their once rich dyes bled to ash. The acrid tang of ozone hung heavy in the air, mingling with the coppery scent of blood. And there, in the center of the devastation, stood Rowena. Samantha's sister was a vision of icy beauty, her jet black hair whipping around her face in an eldritch wind. Her skin glowed with an unholy light, veins pulsing black beneath the surface. And her eyes? Obsidian orbs that seemed to swallow all warmth, all reason. The eyes of a woman consumed by her own darkness. Hello, sister. Rowena's voice was a silken purr, edged in malice. What a touching scene I've stumbled upon. The prodigal daughter, playing house with the enemy. Samantha stepped forward, shielding Nathaniel's prone form with her own body. He'd taken a vicious curse meant for her, and now lay unconscious at her feet, blood trickling from the corner of his mouth. The sight made her heart clench with a fierce, protective rage. This ends now, Rowena. She kept her voice steady, channeling every ounce of authority she'd learned at Vivian's knee. Your lies, your schemes, your senseless violence. It all ends here. Rowena threw back her head and laughed. A bone-chilling sound. Oh, my dear, stupid Samantha. So naive. 
So blindly righteous. She cocked her head. A serpentine smile curving her lips. You really thought you could beat me? That light will always triumph over darkness? She spread her arms, and shadows gathered at her fingertips, pulsing in time with her blackened heart. There is no light, no righteousness, only power, and those too weak to seek it. Violet lightning arced from her hands, casting the hall in garish relief. It struck Samantha square in the chest, sending her flying backward into a crumbling pillar. Pain exploded through her, starbursts of agony that made her vision tunnel. Rowena advanced slowly, drinking in her sister's torment with a terrible hunger. Poor little Samantha. Always the favorite. The chosen one. Her face twisted in an ugly sneer. But I see you for what you really are. Weak, dot. Pathetic, dot, dot, dot. Unworthy of the Greenbrier name. Through the haze of pain, Samantha heard Nathaniel groan, saw him struggling to rise, only to collapse back to the blood-slicked flagstones. And something in her shifted. A cold calm descended, crystalline and absolute. The pain receded, replaced by a clarity as sharp as midwinter ice. She thought of her mother's gentle smile, Vivian's guiding wisdom, Ophelia's fierce, unshakable friendship. Duh! Nathaniel's searing kisses, his unwavering faith, the way he'd challenged her to forge her own path. No, he she was not weak. She was a daughter of earth and starlight, magic thrumming in her very bones. She'd lost, and grieved, and remade herself in an image of her own choosing. And she would be damned if she let Rowena take that from her now. Slowly Samantha pushed herself upright, met her sister's crazed stare with a cool, implacable resolve. You're wrong, she said softly. Implacably? I am worthy. Not because I was chosen, but because I choose. I choose the light. I choose my coven. Her gaze flicked to Nathaniel's stirring form, and her heart swelled. And I choose love. Rowena snarled slashing her hand down in a vicious arc to you. A wave of writhing shadow hurtled toward Samantha, a maelstrom of shrieking, malevolent hunger. Love is a lie, she howled, spittle flying from her lips. There is only the hunger, the hatred, the need to dominate and destroy. I will rip the heart from your chest and feast on your screams. But Samantha was already moving. Power surged through her, Ancient and pure, a searing tide of starfire. It burst from her fingertips in a blinding flare, colliding with Rowena's curse in a cataclysmic eruption of light and shadow. The shockwave blasted them apart, sending them skidding across the rubble-strewn floor. Samantha hit the ground hard, the breath knocked from her lungs. For a moment, she lay there, stunned, blinking spots from her eyes. Then, through the ringing in her ears, she heard it. A low, agonized moan. Nathaniel Dutt. Adrenaline flooded her veins, propelling her to her feet. She staggered toward the sound, heedless of the fresh bruises blooming on her skin, the hot trickle of blood at her temple. He was crumpled against the far wall, one arm bent at a sickening angle. But his eyes, those beautiful silver eyes, were open. Hazy with pain, but alive. Screaming his silent support, his utter faith in her. Samantha felt it infuse her, a shot of pure light straight to her core. With a thought, she summoned her athame, the ritual blade passed down through generations of Greenbrier women. It smacked into her palm in a flare of emerald witchfire, perfectly balanced. She curled her fingers around the amber hilt, drawing strength from the thrum of ancient magic in the inscribed steel. Across the hall, Rowena was rising from the rubble, her hair a writhing nest of obsidian serpents. Her skin had cracked like a porcelain doll, leaking tendrils of oily black smoke. The darkness in her veins pulsed and seethed, a living thing clawing its way to the surface. You can't defeat me. The words were a banshee shriek, barely human. Rowena staggered forward, hands curled into talons, leaving charred footprints on the flagstones. 
I am the next high priestess. I am destined to rule. Time seemed to slow, narrowing to a single, crystallized moment. The moment of choice. Of truth. No, Samantha said. Calmly. Implacably. She raised her athame, the blade glowing like captured moonlight. You're not. And she struck. A scream rent the air as the sacred steel pierced Rowena's chest, parting cursed flesh like butter. The darkness in her veins shrieked and hissed, guttering like a candle flame. Rowena's onyx eyes blew wide with shock, with disbelief, and then, at last, with a terrible understanding. Sister, she whispered. A single crimson tear tracked down her ashen cheek. Samantha cradled Rowena's crumpling form in one arm, the other still locked around the atham buried to the hilt in her heart. Agony ripped through her, soul deep, for the innocence lost. The bond shattered beyond mending. I'm sorry, she breathed. For everything. For not being there. For not seeing the darkness taking root. For not being strong enough to stop it before it came to this. A blood-flecked smile curved Rowena's lips, even as the unholy light in her eyes dimmed. Don't be. You did what you had to do. What I could not. A rattling breath. In the end, you were always the stronger one. Her head lolled, Samantha's tears splashing her waxen face. Samantha hugged her sister's body close, a howl of grief building in her throat. The hall blurred, shadows bleeding together. And Rowena turned to dust in her arms, leaving her clutching nothing but empty air and bitter regrets. For a long moment, there was only silence. A terrible, echoing silence, broken by Samantha's choked sobs. Then, strong arms enfolded her from behind, drew her back against a familiar wall of muscle, a heartbeat as known to her as her own. It's over, love. Love. Nathaniel's voice was hoarse with pain, with shared sorrow, but beneath it thrummed an indomitable core of strength, of pride. You did it. You saved us all. But the cost. Samantha turned her face into his chest, breathing in the scent of him. Sweat and blood and wood smoke. I am. What I had to do to become was what needed to be done. Nathaniel tipped her chin up forcing her to meet his unwavering gaze. You are a warrior, Samantha Ray. A protector. A light in the dark. The corner of his mouth kicked up. My light. And she wept. Great, racking sobs that shook her to the core. For her sister. For herself. For all that had been lost and broken and reborn. Nathaniel held her through it, murmuring soft words of comfort. Of love. Ophelia found them like that, entwined amongst the rubble, and added her own slim arms to the embrace. Then came the rest of the Blackthorns one by one, circling them, supporting them, healing them. In the days that followed, as the covens pieced themselves back together, Samantha did the same. It was a slow, painful process, full of difficult truths and even harder choices, laying Rowena to rest, both in body and memory. Stepping into her role as high priestess, rebuilding the Greenbriar's fractured trust. And through it all, Nathaniel was by her side. Her rock, her refuge. The wicked humor to her solemn strength, the shadow to her light. With him, she was free to be all of herself, the leader and the lover, the warrior and the woman. He taught her that there was power in balance. That she need not sacrifice her heart on the altar of duty. That love, in all its forms, was the greatest magic of all. And when, on a perfect May morning, he dropped to one knee in the rose garden and offered her a ring forged of blackthorn silver and greenbriar emerald, she knew. Knew that this was the path she was meant to walk. The future she was meant to claim. Together, they would unite the covens, usher in a new era of cooperation, of harmony, guide their people into the light, heart to heart, hand in hand, with the unshakable bond of the ones who had stared into the abyss, and chosen 
against all odds, to love. Samantha smiled through her tears and said yes, 